guys, your girl Karina here, and happy Holy Easter Thursday! And as I said, my music cover, which I highly recommend you go check out if you have already not. Um, it's the last day of April, April 30th. <laughs> no, that's for you guys, just a joke. Um, yeah, I can't believe, you know, it's our April's already gone. And yeah, since this quarantine started like around the end of March, April just flew by, at least for me. I don't know how it went for you guys, but hopefully, 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 you know, April has been very fruitful for you, especially it's Easter season. We celebrate the death of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus. So therefore, even more so, we should be bearing fruit so much for him during this whole April month. And really, again, as I keep on saying in all my videos, we have to use all of our gifts and talents and blessings of God for Christ. It's our gift back to him. It's our gift back to him. He gave that and blessed that for to us. And therefore, it's our job and our duty to give it back to God, sharing it to others as our gift to him. And that's how it is because again God has a mission for you as I keep on saying in all my videos that it's up to you to say yes that unconditional yes and it will truly allow you to have that inner freedom to really proclaim God's word out there with no fear so with that said I again I thank you so much for being here very much. You are a blessing. You are my prayers. I have no clues watching this, but I just want to put it out there if you know me in person. <laughs> um, if you know me in person, we will meet again soon in God's time and God's graces. God's time. And for those that don't know me, my name is Sharina. I love being me. Give me a for God. And I just love to be really candid in my videos. And with that said, I want you guys to please subscribe if you have not already done so, which is right here. <laughs> um and it really means so much to me from the bottom of my heart and i want to put out there that i want you to have favorite water each to a beverage with you and your favorite snack with you so that you will be able to be comfortable and hang out with me spend time with me for god for christ yes woohoo <laughs> and honestly we have to do the best that we, can, that we can literally we have to do the best that we can for christ Regardless of what resources we have, regardless of what situation we're in, we have to maximize everything for Christ. So with that said, let's get started. Hey. I want to talk with another saint today. Yay! Unless you cheated again. Hey, stop cheat. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's like a dead giveaway, so... Unless I say to be a mystery, then obviously you wouldn't know, but it's a title. So therefore, you're bound to see it. So anyways, with that said, I wanted to talk to you guys about loving others for God through the eyes of St. Alfred of Revolt. Now you're probably like, who's that dude? What? Yeah, I know. Like, honestly, when I read the first, the second chapter of the book I'm reading right now, and it was talking about that saint, and I was like, who's this guy? I've never heard of him. Well, not just this guy, but he's a saint, obviously. So he's a holy man of God <laughs> as well, since he's a saint. So yeah, I when I read about him, I was like, oh, okay, okay. You have St. Therese of Lucia that was all about simplicity and the little way for God. The, that straight express elevator to Jesus Christ and God. But then this one was more of just fully exercising his faith by loving others. It's said in John 15, 12, love one another as I have loved you, right? Like Jesus really put it out there for us to really know and have that solidified fact that we have to love ourselves just as Jesus loved us, us, the sinful us, <laughs> right? And it's very key that we really take that to heart though, especially at times when we're having a bad day, when we just finished church and someone cuts us off, driving, yeah. 
really think about it in those situations like that or when you're just minding your own business and like your coworker just drives you nuts that's like Psh, be nice <laughs> no 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 don't like that. but really as i'm saying like it's said in the scripture jesus told us we have to love others just as he loves us so Essentially, I love how the saint, though, he really exercised that regardless of what hardship she's gone through. He went through a lot of ailments, actually, in his life. Like, he didn't have it the luxury way, and it's just like, okay, let's go, let's do something. <laughs> no, it's like he really had that sense of purification throughout his life during that time of him experiencing those ailments. Like, kidney stones, one of them, and a variety of others. And imagine really loving others while you're in pain physically. So I know for <laughs> I know for a fact when um when it comes to me with the ladies, you know, when we have our monthly stuff. Yeah, when we have the cramps, oh back off. <laughs> like that's what I'm saying. Like when you're I know that's just one example, but I'm pretty sure like maybe if your legs sore from working out too much or you have a sore back from sitting down too much. It could be a number of things, but when you're essentially in physical pain, your temper tends to go with it. I don't know about you with your temper, but just from experiences in my life, you know, and uh, essentially with me, like whenever I'm, I'm in pain, I just keep it to myself. Before I used to really like vocal it out, like, no, leave me alone. But now it's just like, um, no, I'm just kidding. I'm not meditating. But my, <laughs> you get my point though. It's like when you really exercise that fact of loving others, just as Jesus loved you, it has to be during those difficult times when you're in physical pain, mental pain, emotional pain, pain, sorry, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And it's really it gives us that challenge to overcome our tempers at times. Like we have to be able to control that. Hence the virtue of self-control. <laughs> yeah, no, really, it's tough. Like really practicing the virtues altogether alone is like a challenge in itself. But they're there. God puts them there for us to be able to be better to be pure in the eyes of Christ. It's the only thing about it. So I love how like, you know, the saint really exercised that throughout his whole lifetime. And plus he started an abbey, you know, and, and really practiced that amongst his brothers and sisters in Christ. God, really, like if we aren't loving others and then we think we're loving God, we're just fooling ourselves, really. Because, again, as I keep on saying in all my videos, God can see your intentions in your heart. God can see your intentions, if they're pure, if they're selfish motive reasons. God knows what's in your mind. <laughs> and really, like, we cannot hide. God can see everything. Therefore, you know, when you really know you are really lying to yourself at the end of the day, wake up and do something about it by really turning your heart towards Christ and knowing the fact that you have to love your brothers and sisters in Christ regardless, regardless of them feeling the same way for you or not. No, it's tough. Like it's said in the scripture to love your enemies. Jesus said that. So that's what I'm saying, you know, when you really practice the way of Christ, when you really allow Jesus to be a part of your heart, not a part, like to be in your heart completely, it includes that as well to, by loving your enemies. And really time back to the saint though, he had enemies too. You didn't have the easy way. Like I'm pretty sure when he was really enduring his whole lifetime, facing a variety of people, he really knew for a fact that exercising that virtue of love towards his brothers and sisters in Christ around him, and even those who didn't like him, 
was ultimately one of the challenges that he had to face. But once he started his own abbot, abbey, basically, he truly exercised that. He didn't punish the monks that were there. Like, he really practiced that in every single way. And so, therefore, it really shows that example of Christ for them to do the same to their neighbor as well. Which means that we, as brothers and sisters in Christ, we have to do our duty to show an example of Christ to others. That is our way of proclaiming God's word out there through our actions. We don't have to throw a book at the person and be like, hey, read this Bible. Out of all things, that's probably going to be like, what do you, what? No, that's not my cup of tea. Sorry. You know, and so essentially, when you really proclaim God's word out there, you have to show and you have to reflect that from here first. When you really have that engraving in your heart that you are loving others just as God loved you, that means you're really loving God at the end of the day. Just really think about it. Like when you're in your professional lives, in your jobs, in school, with your friends, with your special someone, or your significant other, or your wife or husband if you're married and watching this. I don't know who's watching this. But you get what I mean though. Really think about it. That's why communication is so key when it comes to really loving your sister, your brothers and sisters in Christ and those around you. Because it's how you say things that makes an, a huge impact. Because you can be saying like one thing, but then if you say it the wrong way, it's just going to have such the opposite effect of what you want in the result, basically. Right? So that's why like if someone's having a bad day or someone is just kind of distancing themselves from you, you know, really reach out to them and just like, in a loving manner, the way Christ would to you. And really like seek, you know, that love for them and just be like, be there for them. But if they need space, then fine, grant them that space. At least you know there's that communication there. You know, I'm no expert in how to talk, but really I try, like I learn through the different experiences and I try to figure out what works best and creating that neutral ground between two people and trying to make things work regardless. And so you should too as well. You know, the tonality, how you speak, the words you use. And that means don't even use vulgar words out of all things. It's not needed. So this saint really lived entirely for love and friendship. You know, and that's how it's supposed to be. You know, when it comes to really reflecting Christ to others from your heart, you have to live in that virtue of love and that freedom from that dependence on sin. Because when you're free from that dependence on sin, then you can really enable yourself to love your neighbor. Right? Like, honestly, I know there are times when we try to f think, feel that we need to sound right. But in times like that, don't let the ego get to your head and be like, oh, I have to be the right one. Therefore, I need to really brew it down to the person that they know that I'm right. It's like, really think about it. Like, what is going to come out of that other than an argument and a disagreement? Really, what other things can come out of that? So my point is that the sense of ego again will arise. The sense of pride will definitely arise at times too when it comes to really exercising that love for others and for your neighbors and especially for your enemies. Because really, it can get to our minds at times, really. But therefore, we always need to call for the intercession of our Blessed Mother Mary and Jesus Christ our Lord, and the power, strength, and hand of God in all those situations. Because we can't do it alone. As I mentioned before, we are human, we are weak. 
we are weak. We have our weaknesses, as I've mentioned before, and without in mind, which means we cannot do it alone. We constantly need Christ to guide us in every situation we're in, especially when you're trying to exercise that virtue of love for your neighbor. Right? So really, we have to choose that force of God, that power hand of God to enable us to exercise that. We have to have that full surrendering into God's hands and to really tell him that I can't do it alone without you. We cannot do it alone. And again, it's exercising that virtue of humility in which our Blessed Mother Mary did so very obediently full humility and that grace to follow the will of God. Therefore, we should follow her example and Jesus Christ's example, whom they really followed the will of God to the very end. Jesus Christ did. Jesus Christ didn't quit. And Jesus Christ knew he was going to die on a cross. He didn't say, oh, no, thank you. I'm not signing up for that. Yeah, Jesus didn't do that. Jesus really took it all in from God to follow the will of God. Took it all in. Because that's how much he loves us. He took all of our sins. He took all of our burdens just for the sake of that love for us. Just think about it. So when you come across a case that someone's bothering you, or someone's just like annoying you in some degree, you know, show love for the person by at least acknowledging their presence at some degree in the most kindest way and the way that Christ would do to you if you were in their shoes. Because really, we have like in every situation, I feel that, you know, I like to really think about it if I was in their shoes and how I would handle the situation instead of just being like, why are they doing this? Jeez. No. Like, honestly, it's just, you think about it, if you were in their shoes and feeling that certain way, how would you handle it? All right? It's a lot of, it's really thinking about both sides of the coin. You know, when you really think about it from only your perspective and not from the person's perspective, then really, again, you're just being selfish. Like you're not really showing that love for your neighbor. You're just being like, eh, I don't care. No, that's not how it works. Imagine Christ doing that to you. It's being like, oh, I don't have time for you. I have other souls to save. <laughs> I'll be like, no. So really, I just wanted to put it out there that I love how the saint said this quote, actually. He said, when we take care to form a good friendship, one free of sin's perversions, we will enjoy wonderful benefits. It's so cute. You know, I love how it's just so concise to the point where we need to form wonderful friendships and fruitful friendships around us so that we will be able to flourish for Christ together. You know, we have to be children in the eyes of God in order for us to enter the kingdom of heaven. And so I really think about that way. Like I like to have that imagery of just like little kids and just really like getting along with each other in the playground and just, you know, really showing that love for each other when they're kids. Yeah, I remember seeing that when I was like in grade eight and I saw like the little kindergarten, junior kindergartens, like, you know, kind of like playing with each other. So cute. <laughs> and, you know, I, I know there's always like one case like, in the corner that's just kind of going through something. But then majority of the playgrounds all like, yeah, like all these clap games and all like throwing balls like and stuff like that, playing catch with each other. It's so cute. You know, and should we? And so we have to think about that even when we're adults, young adults. I don't know who's watching. Maybe teenagers or kids. You know, really have that imagery. You know that the 
kingdom of heaven will be surrounded with wonderful loving children getting along with each other. And so when you have the imagery, you'll be able to really have that mentality to exercise that now on earth. And that you'll be able to really reflect Christ to others around you from your heart. Naturally, you don't have to put on a facade or just be like, okay, I have to look nice today. I have to act nice. No. Like, that's not how it works. If you're going to put like a fake act on, then you're not be you're just fooling yourself. Especially as a guy. God's like, what are you doing? Hello? Wake up. You know? So that's what I'm saying. You know, if you're really going to try to love your brothers and sisters in Christ, do it with full genuineness and integrity. Don't become an actor and actress. Because again, God can see what's in your heart. God can see what your intentions are in your heart. So, really, you know, the mirror of the scriptures really shows us that Christ showed his love so much for God and drove him to the cross of being crucified for us. So really think about it. Just have that beautiful image in your mind that the kingdom of heaven will be filled with children loving each other, you know, just in that cup games, Thing catch, really showing that care and those smiles, running around, being happy. I know it sounds so idealistic, but it is possible. When you really have that encounter with Christ and you really feel that anything is possible, because again, it is a it is a fact that anything is possible with God. So therefore, you know, make it a reality that, you know, really showing true love to your neighbor and to those around you, and especially your enemies, is completely possible through the power of Christ, through the intercession of Blessed Mother Mary, through the power, strength, and guidance of God. So really think about that when you go on with your day-to-day -day life. So. There you have it. So, really, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's short. Hey, am I hearing any whining there? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and I really hope you enjoyed this video again. And I, my prayers go out to you very much so. And regardless, please stay safe. And I will see you guys tomorrow. And as I always love to say on all my videos, don't be afraid to be true warriors of Christ.